So I just want it to be known that the strongest character seemingly in Windbreaker, who is number one, the top dog at this school, is just Gojo. It's a character with white hair voiced by the same VA who voices Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen. That is fantastic. That is absolute perfection. Turf Wars on the horizon. We get thrown right into probably the best intro to any episode of the season. The first minute and a half is just throwing hands and kicking people upwards and breaking jaws. Badass. Incredible. And goofy. The show is goofy. I said it last week that this is very similar to the vibe if you've ever watched Dorara. That is a show where characters can kick ass. But it's also, it's a goof, it's a vibe, it's silly. And while yes, there isn't the same type of hook that something like a Tokyo Revengers has. There's no, oh, characters are gonna die or it has to save this person, right? There's no big death or time travel or there's no gimmicks to hook you into this show, which in return makes the anime community focus less on a show like this. And that's true. If Windbreaker started episode one or had at some point a big death, this show would be at least three times more popular with where we're at it's that's just how it happens think of a show like Talentless Nana if there wasn't the twist with Talentless Nana and they kept it just kind of a little more ominous what would end up happening is you'd end up with a situation like Train to the End of the World where because there isn't a big death it's not as talked about it is just an objective fact that if there's a death or a big hook that's like oh my god you have to talk about this if that's not there, shows get less talked on. But in my humble opinion, Windbreaker with three episodes is better than any recent thug gangster anime that we've seen. It is incredibly good with its cast. The fights are incredible. The camera work, the fact that they actually put an emphasis on footwork. And the vibe of watching a character Sakura who lacked human connection. A handshake alone is enough to be like, so I don't throw hands. Like, it's just confusing to him. A character who's slowly going to open up to the idea of what actual connections are supposed to be like. A twist on what you associate with, like, okay, they're a bunch of thugs who are in a big gang school. No, actually, they protect the people. They're for the people. They don't start fights. They clean them up when they come to their turf. And most importantly, an uncertainty of where all these extra little stories are going to go because... As we get introduced to one character, you lose once on their turf and you get your jacket stripped and your face impaled and you know soccer versus him are going to throw hands at some point. In my humble opinion, this show has gotten progressively better. If anything, I think this was like twice as good as either episodes 2 or 1. Just quality shit nonetheless, but maybe I'm the outcast. Full live reaction to this week's wonderful episode of Windbreaker over on my Patreon. If you want to see my full link of thoughts, they're over there if you're interested. So, what we ended up getting was quality first minute and a half we get this fight because we ended last week big table gets broke and we start throwing hands and that move when he dude's a gymnast the way he bends over and then just kicks upwards and just like the blood across his face then the announcer comes on and of course everyone's like oh shit there's blood he's like no one's gonna get on get into fights on the first it's like no 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 of course trying to wipe the blood i get it maybe the like the constant switch to comedy isn't for everyone but there's so many popular shows that do exactly this so it's like i know it's not like an outcast thing to pray something like this there's a reason a show like dorara ended up getting as many seasons as it did right this type of vibe is actually something that a large portion of the anime community likes and when you actually mix it with a bunch of likable characters and and interesting personalities you have a recipe for success and i think the interesting thing about making the mc more of a sundere because and it's not just because he's like baka don't show me kindness because of no reason like the dude was literally touched and love deprived like it, he was treated like scum from pretty much as far as we can tell from pretty much near minute one so to have a school that he's thinking he's gonna fight his way to the top he's gonna kick everyone's ass and he does throw hands a decent amount in this episode even against his own people but he's shocked that he's like why am i cleaning up graffiti why are we walking the town why don't we go over there and kick some ass and it's like no like if people start shit we're gonna we're gonna clean it up as seen by you know the first episode as an example but the idea that you know, it's going to be interesting because the dude who's tried to uh, kind of like break things up and it was just always smiling last week. That's all he did this episode, but he loves Sakura. He loves how out of pocket he is because one of their own is trying to run away from this other person, this other group's turf, right? Goshi, he's not going to get there in time. He's tripping. And I wasn't sure what was going to happen. Frenemies it is. 
because they both come in, drop kick this fool, and I'm surprised he's not in the ER from that alone. He definitely would have been after his own people start turning against him. But the idea that that's basically a declaration of turf wars, right? Like, you don't come to our side, we don't come to yours, that's the agreement. Anyone who does that, well, fuck around and find out. And the idea that he's like, that's our person. Like, you can't leave your person behind because you're scared of these rules. No, like, he's there for whatever reason, we have to defend him. And the fact that the second in command, not even the top dog of this group, the second in command comes in rips the coat off if you lose it's just an immediate game over which then sets the stage of like okay even if it's not necessarily soccer who ends up fighting him like what happens if this guy loses will he take the same you know high road or low road in terms of getting his coat removed like it seemingly is survival of the fittest and there's no room for error and that declaration of how he's like you know at first he's thinking this guy's a badass but then he starts seeing how he treats he's like actually this dude's just he's scum underneath my boot just great stuff man and the fact that they just then end the episode like this did not feel like 20 minutes i thought for sure we were at the halfway mark when we got up to the garden gojo decides to show us off that this is the number one student at their school the number one top dog this is the spot that soccer is aiming for gardener <laughs> He wants to be the strongest of the strong and this man's up here relaxing. He's got the beach vibes and he's gardening. It's it gets more Gojo the more you think of it. Like this is the perfect casting for this dude, man. Like it's just so good with the vibe of the cast. We can have the most intense action you can expect. Then goofy people just they, they, they feel like kids and just there's something about this. I actually really appreciate that they didn't just come in swinging with here's a death, or here's this gimmick that's going to keep you here. Instead, they said, here's great characters. Here's a fun cast, great production, with a twist on a gang-style story that you normally wouldn't see. And the thing about this is that the author of Windbreaker loves Tokyo Revengers. It's very clear that this was influenced by Tokyo Revengers. A lot of the vibes of this, you can see how, like, it's like, oh, twist Tokyo Revengers in this direction, you get that. I like both series. And there's nothing wrong with the comparisons because it's like, oh, if you like this, you'll probably like this. But if you didn't like this part of Tokyo Avengers, you might enjoy this. This is an author who said, that's a really cool story. I wonder what I can do with my own twist on it. And his own twist is his own identity that it's like, as someone who likes Tokyo Avengers, it feels good to have in recent memory, like two really solid series. You know what I mean? But as I've said, I think this is going to be hands down way better than Tokyo Avengers. I already like it more. And, uh, you know, the more I'm seeing of the cast, the more excited I am. Based on the opening, that little cafe seemingly is going to be our hub area. And I'm excited for people to continue to mess around and find out. Let me know what you thought of this week's episode, though, down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're around here. Of course, ring that bell so you can notify when I upload more. And like I mentioned, we got those full live reactions over on my Patreon. And hey, why over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. So today we got GR Vallis, Searcher7, Rockano9, Pav, and Jod Husa. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.